Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Murray Vance. I gave a course in psychology of sex for adults some years ago. And one night, one of the men who was enrolled for the course came up to me and he said, Dr. Banks, it's been at least 30 years since I've been in a school. And I'm taking this course in the psychology of sex. Please do us a favor, won't you? Give us plenty of homework. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wish we had had more homework when we were younger because we all need education in at least four phases of life. We need education in the physical, in the emotional, in the intellectual, and in the sexual. But you show me where, in America, human beings are given an opportunity to learn as much about their sex life as they are about their physical life or their intellectual life. Show me what school teaches one one-hundredth about sex as they do about, for example, plane geometry. Try and find a place. Where did you learn what you know about sex? Where are your children learning what they know about sex? Is it any wonder then that we pass on ignorance, misinformation, distortions, and lies from one generation to another? Because there is no educational system to provide for teaching the truth. What happens really? Mrs. Goldberg, for example, asked her husband to go to see a play with her one night. He said, I don't want to go. She says, why not? It's because when the, it's always the same. When the curtain goes up, first he wants and she doesn't. Then she wants, he doesn't. Then when they both want, the curtain comes down. <laughs> Unfortunately, the curtain comes down too fast when it comes to learning about one's sex education. We have a very peculiar idea about sex in America. We think that if we put a fig leaf over the nude statue, then there's nothing underneath the leaf. Next time you see one of those statues, do me a favor, won't you? Lift the leaf and take a look. See if there's anything there. There's, I wonder if you belong to that particular school of people who believe in the fig leaf delusion. One day, little Willie came to his father and he said, Papa, where'd I come from? The stork brought you, Willie. But Papa, where'd you come from? The stork brought me too, Willie. And Papa, where did Grandpa come from? Now, Willie, the stork brought us all and that's enough. He says, all right, Papa. The next day in school, the teacher was asking for little talks. When little Willie's turn came, he stood up and he said, it's a known fact, there have been no normal sex relations in our family for three generations. <laughs> it is impossible to overemphasize the importance of an adequate sex knowledge. If we abuse our physical health, we will pay for it. If you neglect your health, if you eat the wrong foods, if you smoke, if you overdrink, if you ignore the rules of physical hygiene, nature makes you pay for it. If you overreach, you will get fat. If you underreach, you will be thin. You can't escape the laws of nature. On the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, if you violate the principles of mental health, you will lead yourself to a perfect nervous breakdown because there are roads to nervous breakdown, just there as there are roads to healthy, happy adjustments. Similarly, sex can be a source of great satisfaction and joy to human being. And on the other hand, it can bring you more pain, more sorrow, more regret, more sinful feelings, more guilt than perhaps any other thing. It is fantastic, really, the amount of sex ignorance in our population, the things that people believe about sex. You'd be amazed if you knew how many people believe that sex activity must tire you out. That is, it want, anyone who has sex activity must be tired. This is, of course, completely false. But if you believe it, you will be tired. That you can be sure of. So we have a nation of tired people around us. <laughs> now, sex is one of the great hungers of human life. Just as you are born with a hunger for food, with a drive for, for drink, you also are born with a drive for sex. Now, of course, nobody frustrates you in your drive to have a hamburger. If you're hungry and you want to say, let's go out for a hamburger, nobody says, ooh, you must be a dirty thing. What a filthy mind. <laughs> you know, nobody calls you names or looks down on you when you try to satisfy your physical hunger for food. But did you ever hear people announce, I'm really sexually hungry. Let's go out and find something. <laughs> so naturally, but although that's one of the great drives, that naturally goes underground and we become very, very hypocritical about it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is essential, terribly important, that you and your children get a proper presentation of sex. A valuable education in sex is one that is always objective rather than moralizing, one that will be practical rather than academic, one that will stress the psychological aspects of sex, not only the physical, one that is honest and forthright and doesn't keep constantly talking about birds and bees. Jim, Jimmy Durante once said, my father taught me about the birds and the bees so good, I can't get interested in girls. <laughs> the most important thing for a good sex education, believe it or not, is not learning techniques, not learning what to do and how to do it, but the most important thing about sex that you or your children can ever learn is to have an attitude, an attitude, if you please, of understanding, a philosophy towards sex that will make you an artist of life, that will help you enjoy sex as God meant you to, and not to suffer and struggle with it like a donkey under a burden. There are very few adults in our country who are not somewhat twisted, distorted, and perverted in their attitudes towards sex. One woman said to me, do you realize what the percentage of sex maniacs is? It is one out of every man. <laughs> and so if you, will, if you will take a look at what picture does sex present in America today, you'll find that it simply shows that for most people it is simply a very disturbing perplexity. There are some who can meet it more or less with tension and embarrassment. Others who may accept it as inevitable but dirty. Some others who are always guilty and sinful and ashamed, regardless of what they do, if it is sexual. One man said to a woman, let's come to my room tonight. She says, I'll hate myself in the morning. He says, sleep late. <laughs> it is very difficult, of course, to approach the study of sex in an objective manner because you are already filled with all sorts of associations, conditionings, attitudes, feelings that make it very difficult for you to discard them and listen very objectively to a discussion of the factors of masturbation, homosexuality, intercourse, the sex drive, attitudes. Because most people will dry up into themselves with a little shame, with tension, or a great deal of shame, depending upon the way you've been brought up in the first place. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important for us to realize at the outset that although the sex drive is primarily biological in nature, that is, reproduction of the species, that human beings do not engage in sex primarily to reproduce. A human being engages in sex for other reasons, for other psychological reasons, for very legitimate reasons of pleasure, fulfillment, or expression of love. It does not serve simply to reproduce. Now, there is therefore a psychology of sex in a human being. Two, it is important, for example, the way you feel about a person, the way you think about them, the, the particular attitude you have about them. If you hate someone, you can't respond to them sexually. You can't even love someone you're afraid of. Sex attraction and love attraction are even different. Now, there is, as I said, a psychology of sex in human beings, not among animals. To a dog, any dog will do. Some men the same. <laughs> you know that it's important, for example, how you feel about the person, what they look like, how they affect you. Take something, as you see, those of you who thought sex is so physical may find out that sex is primarily psychological in the human being. Take something as physical, for example, as a kiss. Now, what can be more physical than a kiss? Two skins touch. But if you could get a thrill out of two skins touching, you could go around and kiss pigs. Some do. I see you know who they are, too. You know that it's important whom you kiss. You kiss one person and your heart skips a beat. You kiss another one, I feel like throwing up right now. 